Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four, some strong storms are possible tonight as a front moves through, leading to a much cooler weekend. Meteorologist Evan Hatter has the latest on this severe weather alert. Hey, Evan. That's right, Steve. That cold front knocking on our door as we head later on into tonight. Now, as of the four o'clock hour, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that risk has been taken down just a touch. Bad news is the risk does still exist out there right now. Our time lapse camera from the University of Virginia at Wise showing plenty of sunshine, which is not what you want to see when you're under a severe weather risk. You'd rather see the cloudiness that would help diminish that threat. But as it is, we're still watching some of that sunshine in some parts of the area. Now we take you out to London Corbin Airport. They've actually seen some of that cloudiness, even a few showers beginning to move in. They sit at a very mild 78. Here is the latest severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center that at two out of five slight risk that was in effect for our far western counties during the morning updates that has now been scaled back, including all the way back into central Kentucky as well. So they are just like most of us under that one out of five marginal risk for severe weather. But at the same time, severe weather does remain possible. Outside right now, a few showers moving through portions of the area. No severe weather in progress into portions of Powell and Estill County. Seeing some showers and right on top of Somerset right now. U.S. 27 through parts of Pulaski County down into Wayne County as well. But you see out to the west, severe thunderstorm watch already in effect for portions of West Kentucky, including a severe thunderstorm warning north of the Murray area. So that's something we're definitely going to be keeping an eye on. Temperatures out there, very mild, upper 70s, low 80s. So if you're headed out to Friday night football, you'll definitely want to keep that WYMT weather app handy. I think most of us will be dry for kickoff, but we'll start to see some shower chances move in later in the game before the big changes on the way later tonight. And I'll have the full breakdown coming up a little bit later on. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. A permanent memorial to fallen Perry County law enforcement officers was unveiled in downtown Hazard a short time ago. WYMT Zach Hawk is there. The idea for the project came from Hazard Police Chief Minor Allen, who told me it was humbling and an honor to see the large turnout at today's memorial. The memorial honors officers from the Hazard Police Department, Kentucky State Police, the Perry County Constable, CSX Railroad Police, and the Perry County Sheriff's Office. 23 officers have plaques on the wall to serve as testament to their sacrifice in the name of having a safe community. Some officers said that seeing the end of watch dates is inspiring and humbling. To be able to know that the community supports you and that they're going to do all they can to honor you, the sacrifice that you made is a really good feeling. Duty, honor, and sacrifice are the guiding principles of law enforcement agents, and today some current police officers got to honor those who came before them. In Hazard, Zach Hawk, WYMT, Mountain News. Hazard Police Chief Miner Allen told us that this is the only memorial to fallen police officers in Perry County. We'll have more from the dedication coming up at 6. Well, law enforcement agencies from Pike and Floyd counties met together today to escort one of their own over the county line. 46-year-old Oliver Little died Wednesday after years of service to his communities following a battle against COVID-19 that hit as he was transferring from the Floyd County Sheriff's Department to the Pikeville Police Department. So both departments and several other local agencies joined together this morning to escort Little in a line of love, taking his body to Hall Funeral Home in Martin, sticking close to his side as he always did for them. Between the Floyd County Sheriff's Office and the Pikeville Police Department, Oliver hasn't been left alone uh, since he passed. Uh, that'll be that also be the case here. He won't be alone until he's until he's at his final resting place. Visitation for Little is at Hall Funeral Home tomorrow night from six until nine, and Sunday until nine p.m. His funeral is set for Monday at eleven a.m. at Allen First Baptist Church. Today, an outside FDA panel of advisors unanimously backed Johnson & Johnson's request to give its COVID-19 booster emergency use authorization. Part of the recommendation says the second dose should come at least two months after recipients have gotten their first. It comes on the heels of the panel's decision to recommend the Moderna booster shot for seniors and high-risk Americans. CBS's Skyler Henry reports from outside FDA headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. For the second day in a row, an FDA advisory panel convened 
this time to decide if the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 booster shot could benefit some high-risk Americans who've already received one dose. We want to provide optimal protection against COVID, and we know that a booster dose will do that. Today, the group of experts also hears data on a study by the National Institutes of Health, which found mixing vaccines from different manufacturers for a booster shot is safe. The study, which has not yet been peer-reviewed, also found that Johnson & Johnson recipients benefited more from getting a Moderna or Pfizer booster. Thursday, the FDA panel voted to recommend Moderna's booster for Americans over the age of 65 or high risk. We do have a unanimous 19 out of 19 yes vote. Full FDA authorization could come in days. Then the CDC would meet next week to provide guidance, which means a full rollout of Moderna booster shots could come as soon as next Friday. Pfizer's booster shot was the first approved for seniors and high-risk individuals. According to CDC data, more than 9 million Americans have received a booster dose. And they're free, available, and convenient to get. President Biden says the country is making progress against the pandemic, but he's urging the tens of millions of still unvaccinated eligible Americans to roll up their sleeves. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Silver Spring, Maryland. Today, the White House said the new policy requiring all adult foreign travelers to the U.S. be vaccinated will officially begin on November 8th. This applies to those traveling by air and land, as well as those undertaking non-essential ferry travel from Canada and Mexico. More Americans experienced pregnancy complications during the pandemic than in 2019. Researchers looked at nearly 325,000 pregnancies in 2019 and 2020. They determined the pandemic impacted a significant number of patients in the U.S. beginning in March of 2020. But they say they do not know if it was an actual COVID-19 infection that impacted the pregnancies. A spokesperson for Bill Clinton says the former president was admitted to the University of California Irvine Medical Center Tuesday evening. The former president was found to have a UTI that spread to an infection in his blood. He underwent tests to determine what bacteria was causing the infection. Clinton's spokesperson says, quote, he's on the mend, in good spirits, and is incredibly thankful to the doctors, nurses, and staff providing him with excellent care and adding he's responding well to antibiotics. Urinary tract infections are common in older people but can be difficult to diagnose. Some symptoms include confusion, weakness, and muscle aches. While urinary tract infections are most common in women, thousands of men do get them every year, possibly due to incomplete emptying of the bladder or the hygiene challenges, and the risk of infection increases with age. Early detection is key to the easily treatable infection. A senior Taliban security official tells CBS News their initial report suggests at least three suicide bombers carried out an attack in Afghanistan that left dozens dead and many more wounded. Last week, the militant group targeted a Shia mosque in the northern city of Kunduz, killing more than 40 people. The rapidly deteriorating security situation is only raising more concerns that ISIS-K is just getting stronger following the U.S.'s withdrawal just six weeks ago. President Biden is back on the road pushing his social spending plan, which remains in limbo in Congress. Today, he visited a child care center in Connecticut to talk about investing in child care and early education. After stopping by the playground at the Child Development Center in Hartford, Connecticut, the president once again pushed for his social spending plan that's now stalled in Congress. No middle class family will pay more than 7 percent of their income on child care. The Democratic Build Back Better Act is still under negotiation, but the president hopes it will include universal pre-K, an extension of the child tax credit, and new investments in child care and the workforce. For the first time in the world, an unmanned drone has delivered lungs for a transplant. The transplant flight is the result of a collaboration between U.S. company United Therapeutics and Canada's University Health Network. The team designed a special container so the organs could withstand in-flight conditions such as vibrations and bumps. The surgeon says this technology will allow more organs to be available to patients in the future.
The lawyers for accused Florida school shooter Nicholas Cruz say he plans to plead guilty to the 2018 massacre at Parkland High School. The guilty plea would set up a penalty phase where the 23-year-old would be fighting against the death penalty and hoping for life without parole. A jury will decide whether Cruz will get the death penalty. The judge hopes that trial will start in January. 17 people died in that shooting in the community of Parkland. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Friday. The Dow closes up today more than 382 points. So good into the week on Wall Street. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour. Still to come on first at four, thousands of employees are on strike around the U.S. for better wages and working conditions. We're saying goodbye to the summer-like weather, and I'll have the breakdown on how low our temperatures could go in addition to the latest on those storms coming up.